Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Walter here at the workbench. So today I'd like to pay homage to the ancients, to the people who worked timber to build homes, to build furniture, to build the cathedrals, those who built massive structures with their bare hands, no power tools. And some of them early on didn't even have things like windmills or water wheels. Many of the workers from the area we call England today, or the British Isles, they had oak forests and in those oak forests they would find the trees they needed to be able to split the timbers out of for their structures and to split boards out of to make furniture etc these boards were split now these are red oak typically they would have been white oak or maybe English oak but what they what we did with these is we split wedges and then we took the wedges and we flattened them so that we could do our carving practice so these are quartered not quarter sawn but they are riven and that is as close to pure quartered that you can get what happens is you take advantage of the weakness in the timber because it, it will split easily along the ray fleck. It'll split. So you can take a half of a log, split it in half. Take the half, split it in a quarter. Take the quarter, split it into eighths, and so on until you get down to a dimension that's suitable for your project. The other thing that they knew 500, 600 years ago that we don't even pay any attention to is that when the tree is full of water, it is a lot easier to work. So they would rough out all the parts that they needed set them aside in a certain order so that the ones that needed the most time to dry were done first and the next and the next and so on. Then as the wood was drying they'd continue to work it with more moisture in the wood than we would allow today. Why did they do that? It's simple. It was easy. The finer and finer the work got, the drier and drier the wood. So by the time a piece was done in a traditional unheated workshop, it was as dry as it could get and it would go into an unheated home. So that's different than today. Today everything is, you know, climate control. So I've been planing, as you can see by these shavings, mostly with my jack plane. Now this jack plane is not too much different <clears throat> than what might have been used hundreds of years ago. The big difference is how it's made. I glued it up, they would have chopped it out. Okay, I have a thin blade here, they would have went to their blacksmith and had a thicker wedge-shaped piece of steel and then they would have laminated on a piece of hardened steel in the front and the rest was iron. So my jack plane gets me roughed out but then I take my smoother and the smoother takes an even finer cut. You see how they're staying together more? But these people, these workers, 
they just totally amaze me. They blow us away with all of our power tools, with all of our CNC and everything else. They could go out into a workshop that was nothing more than a lean-to on posts with wind and rain and sun and sleet and hail and dark of night, and they'd get out there and they built the cathedrals. We can't match that work. To this day, we cannot match the work in the volume that they did. As fast as they did, with as lowest cost that they did. We can't match it. Even putting, putting my jack plane aside, putting my smoother aside, and moving all the way over to our modern day tools. Now we've got a chip breaker. We've got two blades with chip breaker and a, and a cutting iron. We've got longer planes, jack planes. As long as we follow the grain, we can get exceptional results. And I hear people say, well, I can't get my plane to work. I'll take the sander out to it. I mean, look at this. We're planing air. This board had been previously planed. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. This board had been planed through a power planer that was one of those fancy, those fancy helical heads. And it still leaves all these little ridges. They have to be removed. You can see them. I hope you can. I'll go through not nice and slow. So they wouldn't have had that to deal with, but they would have had to split their wood, work it green, let it dry, work it a little more, and do this day after day with no climate control piece after piece, making one piece fit to the next piece, because oftentimes nothing was measured. It was just fit, fit one piece to the next. Okay, so now I took the jack plane across that, and I got rid of almost all of the marks, not all of them, but you see that shine that's starting to come? <clears throat> So now I'll make a few marks for progress so I can see what's going on and I'll take my smoother to it. Take an even finer shaving. And they had, they had coffin smoothers that they would make to take really fine shavings. And those usually had a very tight mouth set. And as those wore, they would then be turned into scrub planes and roughing planes, or they would patch them. They'd put a patch in on them and get rid of that mouth opening, tighten it down. But this is white oak, people. This is not... This is not some soft red oak. This is not, this is white oak. It's the hardest of the oaks, other than live oak, maybe a few of the other black oaks, but this is white oak. And there you go. While we're talking, I got rid of all of the plain marks, planer marks from the machine. I've smoothed this. This is ready for finishing. No sanding. That's done. So, mostly today's video was not so much a how-to. I'm going to give you one little tip though. 
when sharpening, freehand, until you need a set of training wheels. Make yourself a couple of wedges. Make a 25, make a 30. Use the 25 to get your primary bevel. Then if you want to do a secondary bevel, I don't, but if you want to, so you can see your progress, and use the 30. What you do is you lay your play blade, plain blade, let me get one here, okay? You lay, lay your bevel on this, like this, on your sharpening stone, and then you get a feel for where your hand needs to be. And then you take it away. And now you sharpen. You do it again. And then you sharpen. Do that 100 times, you'll start to feel what 25 degree feels like. Same thing with the 30. If you do the 25, okay, you get that feel. And then if you raise it up a little, keep going until you can slip that 30 in underneath. Now you take the 30 out, hold that there, and now you know what the 30 is. So you got 25, you got 30, you got 25, you got 30. They're called training wheels or training wedges. Make yourself a set, 25 and 30, or 25 and 27, or 25 and 27 and a half. I don't really care what angle you use. But I wanted to leave you today with the thought, and I'm taking a heavy cut now. You see how that's crumbling? All I have to do is back that down. And take a hair shaving. Now we're at that kind of a shaving. Let's see if we can get that in camera. No, nope, it's not going to stay on. There you go. Mostly air. But I wanted to leave you with an understanding that this, none of this is new. This is all old stuff. It was done four, five, six hundred years ago or more. If you live in a European country, or if you, or if you visit France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Germany, Austria, you're going to find civic buildings and cathedrals with woodwork in it that's hundreds and hundreds of years old. I think one of the oldest houses known is like a thousand years old. Those timbers were all hand worked. One other tip for today. About oak. Oak is a very unique wood. It will have grain that looks like it's running this way. See that? And then it'll have grain that looks like it's running this way. And then there's the ray fleck. See the, the dark markings? They're all running out this way. That's what I go by. I go by the ray fleck. Because that will cause you more tear out than anything else. See on this side, all the ray fleck is going this way. That side's beautiful. So I just put this in here. And I can plane almost any thickness and get a smooth cut. See that? Because I'm not getting any tear out. I'm following the ray fleck out. 
So oak's kind of a unique wood in that regard. But then you still have to pay attention, like I would not plane this board on this face this way, because I'd be going in to these cathedrals that are raising up. I would have to plane this this way. It's all about knowing your wood. You'll figure it out. Any questions, leave them in the comment section. But in the meantime, I hope you found this helpful today. And the next time you have a chance to visit an old building, when I say old, I'm not talking about 1970s. <laughs> yes, it's coming up on 50 years old. I'm talking pre-1900s. I'm talking pre-1800s. I'm talking pre-1700s. You go visit some of those old buildings and you look at the woodwork. You're going to see some that you will say, I could have done better than that. Because they worked with green wood, like I mentioned, and over time, the building has settled. A lot of those buildings have been through wars. Sometimes they've been through fires. And they've been through remodeling where we bring central air conditioning and heat inside the building, which never existed. So that makes all the panels shrink, that makes all your rails and styles shrink, and it joints open up and cracks form. That's not something that the, cab the furniture makers, the joiners and cabinet makers of years gone by did wrong. That is the advancement of society and our, our living style. Nobody wants to be cold anymore, so we heat everything perfectly. But go look at those old buildings. Even here in the United States, the old mansions and the old um, plantation homes and things like that, many of them still here in the United States were totally worked with hand tools. And many of the hand tools were either this style or older where it was just a single blade iron. And it just amazes me. I hope it amazes you. I hope you found something helpful, useful, entertaining here today. But don't make excuses why you need this power tool or why you need that power tool when you can actually walk in a building that was made entirely with hand tools and just be speechless. Speaking of speechless, thanks for watching and head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out. <laughs>